about today is the fact that that uh, there at Mountain Meadows in southern Utah, uh, there are still four mass graves on that ground. The, the gentleman on set with me right now, their descendants are laying, their bones are laying there with just a bunch of rocks on top of them. They are not allowed to go in and to properly honor and inter their own ancestors because the Mormon church owns the property and will not allow it. That is outrageous. And so this foundation is trying to get Mountain Meadows, uh, the, the, the land, uh, turned over to a neutral third party, the federal government, uh, as, for stewardship so that they can get access, so that the story can be told, that monuments can be erected, and history can be brought back from, from, the, from almost oblivion because this, is, this story in American history has just absolutely been pushed to the bottom. Most people don't even know that it happened. And so uh, uh, Scott has a, 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 is, an, is an attorney by trade, and so he can give us the technical side of it. Ron is really the, the, the man with the foundation that is dealing with the stewardship. So why don't we, uh, why don't I turn it over to you, Scott? Why don't you get, kind of give us a legal aspect, and then I'll turn the, 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 over to you, Ron, and kind of talk about what's going on in that regard. I don't know how legal an aspect I can provide. First off, I, I would like to say that the foundation, one of the primary purposes that we were organized initially was to seek uh, a right to unrestricted public access to the massacre site. <clears throat> At that time, the LDS Church only owned and controlled what's known as the Carlton Carn, the, the one uh, mass grave that had been marked uh, back when uh, Carlton interred the truth. The right. others just had uh, piles of rocks on them, and it's uh, scattered out about a little over a mile, mile and a quarter uh, through the length of the Mountain Meadows Valley. Uh, the other sites, the other three uh, known grave sites were on private property, and we couldn't accept the, access those at all. The, the Carlton Carn, the LDS Church, uh, would allow us to access it occasionally, but it was permissive access. And to, still to this day, in order for us to go there and uh, either have some sort of a ceremony or to memorialize our dead in the way we'd like, we have to get the uh, permission and blessing of the LDS Church. And uh, frankly, we resent that. Uh, secondly, I'd like for your viewers to understand that we're, we're, we want respect and not reparations from the LDS Church. Uh, the LDS Church profited handsomely from, uh, from the massacre, but right now we would just like to see our people uh, uh, properly protected, uh, properly remembered. It's an important story for the United States of America. It is it's a story that story. deserves to be honestly told. It can never Absolutely. be honestly told so long as the LDS is in control of the site. So we would like to have it our preferred option would be full-blown federal stewardship so that this were a national monument. Mm -hmm. That would require the LDS Church to gift uh, that property to the Department of Interior, and then at that point in time it would be forever uh, stewarded, uh, maintained in perpetuity by the U.S. government, National Park Service under the auspices or jurisdiction of the Department of Interior. We have... Let me hold you up okay. just a second. Uh, production, could you put up, uh, get ready to put up slide number nine, get it ready? Go ahead, continue, because I want to. I want to amplify okay. on the on the on but, the, the aspect uh, of. But folks, uh, the, as far as the different orders uh, of, or levels of federal protection that you can enjoy, uh, a site can be nominated to the National Register of Historic Places. That's really just a, an honorific uh, designation. The Mountain Meadows, the entire Mountain Meadows area, comprised mm -hmm. of some 7,500 acres, is currently designated to the National Register of Historic Places. However, there's absolutely no restriction on what they can do with the property. They can bulldoze down any monument they want. Uh, right now, and we experienced in 1999, that the landowner, i.e. the LDS Church, could disinter the remains and then assert ownership, the funerary objects that were wrongfully withheld. Let me, let me hold you up on that, folks. Uh, to under, fully understand what Scott just said, in 1999, the, the Mormon Church brought a backhoe in, and they were going to build a little monument uh, uh, there uh, about, the, about Mountain Meadows Massacre. And in the second bite of that backhoe, they dug up a bunch of the skeletons, the remains, of their ancestors. And in, 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 in some funerary objects, so, you know, buttons and other things that were part. You know, and, and those were declared to be, uh, belong to the Mormon Church. They killed these people, 
And, 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 and yet the bones and, and, and the buttons and other things that, that still remain on the site that were the objects of these people, the Mormon church, who is the murderers, has, has uh, ownership. This is insane. This is just absolutely insane. Well, it, it was self-asserted ownership. Now, we legally challenged their claim uh, through the state of Utah. The uh, Utah State Archaeologist, a gentleman named uh, Kevin Jones, agreed with us, the descendants, that the LDS Church, just by virtue of being the owners of that property, even though the the disturbance of the remains had recurred under an Utah Antiquities Act permit, and under the terms of that Antiquity Act permit, the landowner owns, and that's the way the LDS Church, or the vehicle uh, the LDS Church used to assert ownership of these funerary objects. They didn't even tell us that they had not reinterred those. You need to understand that once once the remains were disturbed, uh, they attempted to take them to BYU. There was a protest. We got a, a forensic uh, archaeologist uh, out of uh, the University of Utah uh, who came in and did a, 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 an objective third-person analysis. Uh, then they amended the Antiquities Act permit, put all the bones back, but they withheld, and it is, it's three little buttons. They took everything these people owned, including their clothing, back in 1857. And now the LDS That's Church, outrageous. a multi-billion dollar corporation, has to claim in order to be in control and prove that they're still uh, bigger than the story, bigger than the victims, bigger than the families of the, de of the descendants, that they own three little buttons. And that's all it is. But under Utah law, under current standards of archaeological practice, those sorts of remains or funerary objects are considered part of the remains. They belong to the dead. But the LDS church, simply because uh, I, I don't understand why they need to do that, why, how they can be so big and act so little, I don't, I, it, it mystifies Scott, me still. Uh, Scott, I, you know, your, your passion is, is, is bouncing off of me. And I hope, folks, that, that, you're, that those of you that watch our show every week and you know me, you know I don't get riled up very often. Uh, I'm riled up, and for all the right reasons. This is such an atrocity. And you know what? This clearly shows what Scott has been talking about right here, that the Mormon church wants control of everything. Their people, stake president, bishops, 60 Mormons, were the ones who brutally murdered these people. And yet the Mormon church has to have control of this because they don't want the truth out. It just shows one thing. And I, and, I, and I hope my finger is pointing right to you. I hope Mormon apostles and I hope their prophet is watching this because you're not a church. You are a business. Only businesses protect their image. If you were a church and you were following what Jesus Christ said to do, then why wouldn't these families be allowed to have access to their own dead? I'll tell you why. You know, people wear little bracelets that have WWJD on. What would Jesus do? Well, in the, in the context of the Mormon church, it's what would Joseph do? We know that Joseph Smith lied. He was treacherous. He, his, his reputation is there to be seen. He was anything but what the Mormon church says he was today. And Gordon B. Hinckley, the prophet of the Mormon church, has the ability to right this wrong, and he won't do it. His words were, this is not in the best interest of the Mormon church. Who cares about the interest of the Mormon church? This is justice. This is, the, this is to right a wrong with these family members here that don't even have access to their own dead. Uh, folks, I tell you, my blood is boiling. Uh, you know what, Control, I told you to have number nine ready. And let me back this up. Let's put the address up there, slide number five, so that people can write this address down. And then I'm going to follow it with the phone number so that you can call the Mormon church. There's only one thing the Mormon church understands and that's bad PR, so that when their missionaries show up on your doorstep, you say, I don't want any part of an organization, a business, because that's what the Mormon church is. It is not a church. It does not follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, or they would right this wrong. Up on the screen for you right now, this is the person to get in contact with, and I'm running out of air. I'm so excited here. Marlon Jensen, LDS Church. 35 Northwest Temple Street. Folks, write this address down. Don't just sit there and be a bump on a log. If you want to get involved and you want to write this wrong, they need to hear because this is the only thing that they'll respond to is bad public relations. That's the address. Keep it up on there. And now let's, uh, well, actually, let's go to slide number six. And then, you know what, Ron? Let me